In the Brock Bee Lab, we study the behavior, evolution, and ecology of bees, mostly in the Niagara region of southern Ontario, Canada, but sometimes in other places as well. Our favorite study species are the common bees that most people, even other biologists, never notice, in particular sweat bees and carpenter bees. We have two main lines of long-term research. First is the behavioral and social evolution of sweat bees and carpenter bees. And second, we're monitoring the changing abundance and diversity of bees in disturbed landscapes, especially in former landfill sites. We use all sorts of approaches, including field experiments, extensive behavioral observations, and molecular biology tools aimed at uncovering genetic variation. I study social behavior among female eastern carpenter bees. These females can live on their own or in small groups of up to eight other females. I am aiming to identify what differentiates solitary and social females as well as dominant and subordinate females. My research focuses on mate competition and male territorial behavior in carpenter bees. In the spring, male bees hover near nest entrances to mate outside the nest. The number of females available to mate with at any given time in the breeding season may influence the intensity of competition male space for access to females. I'm looking at the number of male and female carpenter bees that were caught and marked at the nesting site during the 2020 and 2021 breeding season. I'm comparing these numbers to numbers from 2016 to 2019 to understand long-term patterns of male carpenter bee behavior. My research compares three commonly used collection methods targeted netting, photographs, and blue vein traps in order to understand the strengths and weaknesses of each. Understanding which methods work well and how they can work together will help us to determine if there's a best way to collect bumblebees for assessments of their population abundance and distribution. My research is concerned with how bees respond to climate change and social conditions in the field. When it rains too much or there's drought, bees' bodies tend to get smaller and their ability to collect food is reduced compared to years with normal weather. Social conditions also affect bees' abilities to collect food. Nests that have social groups of bees are more productive than nests housing a solitary bee. Most of our fieldwork on carpenter bees is done at the Glen Ridge Quarry Naturalization Site, which is very close to Brock University. In addition to studying the bees' behavior, we set traps for the bees. Through these traps, we have been able to identify 165 bee species in Niagara. Bees are vital to our natural environment. They pollinate crops and wild plants. They help build homes for millions of other insects and animals. They produce food and they support the growth of trees, flowers, and other plants. But they are more than just utilitarian. Bees are precious in their own right. Understanding bees' behavior, evolution, and ecology helps us to fully appreciate these beautiful creatures and work towards their protection and preservation.